a period piece is defined as a body of work that is set in or strongly reminiscent of an earlier historical era. Films set in earlier times an experience that transports viewers into moments from long ago. One crucial variable to bring this to life and enthrall the eye being costume design. In a modern setting, the work of a costume designer would be to curate looks that reflect the character's identity, convey development, and transform the actor into an authentic being on screen. But in a period piece, on top of establishing tone, time, place, and designing for characterization, there are traditionally two approaches, accuracy or artistry, and a coordination of the creative vision of the project. When capturing a time period, costume designers will often opt for reflecting the spirit of the time by grounding their designs with the historical roots, then stylizing components to contribute to the overall imagery of the film, and visually connect directly to the audience. This means that artistry is upheld over accuracy, to tell the story visually by materializing the characters through costumes that captivate the eye and capture the aura of the narrative. When the modern audience constantly is taking in multiple streams of visual content, visual literacy is at an all-time high. But this also means the visual demand to fascinate and truly resonate with the eye, mind, and heart is also at an all-time high. Visual codes of language need to be easily interpreted and hold impact, otherwise they are usually dismissed. True to form and stylized, costume design is necessary, in the same manner that fiction and non-fiction novels exist. Historically, costume design has been executed in numerous ways, and have worked in their own right. A cohesive idea in terms of costuming began during the 18th century. Theatrical troops performing in the Salle Commedia dell'arte began to utilize dress in order to perform as stock characters, so the audience would straight away have an understanding of who the characters were, effectively and efficiently, creating meaning out of the visuals. From the 1770s into the 1870s, a desire for accuracy and further depth came, and into the 19th century, costume design developed into the art form we are more familiar with today historical accuracy to the highest visual precision possible, and the conceptually driven that is designed through a lens of artistry, which would stylize in order to revitalize and fortify a creative vision over true form but with respect to origin. Stylization, the more commonly done in modern media, seeks to express the developed world rather than remaining purely rooted in our external reality. This creates a boundless design realm, and by extension, boundless options in terms of visual communications, with the historical period as a foundation to build upon, giving the audience the feeling of the time and the experience of the story. Success of these visuals is not purely in the hands of the costume designer, but in the collaborating hands of numerous creatives, such as directors, set designers, actors, etc., who together breathe life into an enriched, tangibly conjured up world that gives the illusion of being as dimensional and fascinating as our own. This is necessary as viewers must be able to relate to the world, but also garner an appreciation and connection to those within it through a very specific type of modernity that allows for the history to be embedded. An example of great stylization is The Great Gatsby 2013. The director expressed the need for a vibrant, visceral New York rather than a nostalgic one. The enchanting approach strives to convey the delight, height of emotion, and the highly romanticized concept. Rather than opting for the typical image and fashion of the 1920s, the understanding of the history would allow for a learning the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist situation. Brooks Brothers archives allowed for the men to have a generally correct look a common theme in these period pieces. Through 600 background suits that were advised by a historian, the leading men were more stylized to character, such as Jay Gatsby's conspicuous and at moments tasteless ensembles that mirror his parties and the image he wants to project to the world. The costumes, mostly of women on screen, were a reinterpretation of the classic 20s look. This holds more impact than a true-to-form costume would. Costume designer Catherine Martin garnered together Prada and Mimi pieces for film tests and captured the essence of this adaptation so well. 
that fashion designer Mucha Prada was asked to join the project. On this, Martin stated, Mucha always sees the future with vintage eyes, and I think Bats kind of always sees the past through modern eyes. So that's an interesting nexus of thought. So after a very lengthy intellectual collaboration, where we talked about these modern garments infiltrating the story, they provide this wonderful texture and these different characterizations. These 40 ensembles will be featured for the two party scenes, these scenes that are crucial to the narrative's development, to look at the source material. The novel itself is very stylish, featuring figurative imagery and poetic language that elevates the surface level story while provoking an undertone of wistfulness. The graceful and elegant telling of this story contrasts the crude, gritty, and dirty nature of reality, the type of reality that on screen would not carry the same impact. The stylization allows for the beauty of this telling to translate on screen. Visually, as an audience, our visual intake of information is tested in a story as extravagant as this. To retain literacy and allow for an immersive experience and connection without bombarding the eye, a balancing act is utilized to give into these senses rather than overwhelming. The fashion of Prada and Miu Miu give viewers the full experience away from reality, for imagery that is quaint, fantastic, and even outlandish, while retaining narrative and tones of the period, to depict the poignant tone without crossing a line out of this world. An example of this is the character of Daisy. She is defined by ethereal beauty and charm, along with her fickle and shallow nature, leaving her bored or even cynical. She is very romanticized, but in reality, dimensional. She is aligned with old-fashioned values and places great value on luxury, materializing Daisy into garments would authentically display her traits through design choices such as traditionally feminine hues, wispy feathers that reflect her vocals, and a dainty yet hugging silhouette that highlights her in a demure manner. An outfit that captures the aura of this film is sported by Daisy in the image of Look 33. The frock of chandelier crystals and pastel colors materialize the surface level experience and the reality of her situation. This is not to say style over substance is right, but to make the substance stylish in order to have a vehicle for exploration, well suited in proportion to the story, concept, themes, and characters. Even though a film is not a documentary, many people do learn and perceive history through media. By designing in the image of the period, further insight is given in regard to the social constructs and attributes, as fashion is a societal marker of chain, or tangibly depicts a moment in time. For instance, Emma 2020, the fashion serves as a storytelling device that aligns with the dynamics of the experience, emotional points, set design, and time through quite accurate Regency era clothing with colors to accommodate. The director expressed he wanted the film to be in the image of sugared macarons, stating that sense of froth and enjoyment. Costume designer Alexandria Byrne on this film stated, The Regency was the beginning of fashion becoming a real statement because of the circulation of women's magazines, so I wanted her to be the kind of character that has the right clothes for the right occasion, the right season, the right time of day. She can dress entirely at her whim for the statement she wants to make. You'd end up with 10 completely different outfits because the result would depend on your interpretation of the drawing, your ability to sew, your budget, etc. It's about that sense of individuality and spontaneity. Jane Austen was not one to go in depth about clothing, but the spirit and lightness of the story is very much established in written word. So how each ensemble was worn played a pivotal role. The social ranking of the characters is visibly seen, tangibly, in hand with their ways of life. For instance, even though the film was virtually accurate, Emma removing her glove was a very complex situation. The etiquette expert on the film expressed, We can do that because she could have just eaten, so if she just ate, she'd have had to take her gloves off. And maybe when they were talking, she hasn't put them back on yet. 
and then she can dance with her gloves off. The social convention is intentionally broken to create a moment of intimacy, a type of moment that is very telling of Emma. Being the queen bee type, she is very conscious of fashion and presenting herself. This heightens the details of the garments in relation to other variables of production, such as set or light design. The costume designer on this project intended to not downplay the lavish and more extravagant aspects of the period to be digestible for the contemporary eye, but rather went for what was deemed fashionable of this period as it would be the garment sported and ensured it would be true to form down to the details, such as bonnets, fabrics, textures, types of bows, and collars. For a specific example, the high collars were part of a gentleman's dress code, with an emphasis on a well-kept clean line, an extravagant amount of linen. In the film, they were pushed a bit higher for character impact, but keep the integrity of the original garment intact. When the visual is previously defined and meant to be true in execution, destroy away is a perversion. But when a concept is defined, there is much to be explored outside of the confinement of reality. Often fictional stories will be grounded in reality and inspired by an era, but the fictional events tend to stray away down a path that is much more unique for production or appeals in a differing way with an intent to do so. In Marie Antoinette 2006, Milena Canero decided on inaccuracies to be added for narrative purposes, as the budget would allow for stylization through impressionist techniques with intent over compromising accuracy for production's sake. The costume designer made the decision to work with historical dresses, then design further adjustments to the narrative in line with the creative vision of the film. Since Marie Antoinette was a prominent figure, there was much source material to reference, and her designs would draw inspiration from the fashion of Versailles in this period, which would then alter the execution of adornments, such as sleeves, bows, and chokers, since they would often reference painting of girlhood to translate this girlish narrative on screen. Aesthetically, emotions are tangibly captured to provide expressions for a very specific portrayal. The key moments of this film are like a framework, inspired by historical moments that then have been embellished with conceptual or pop cultural references, backed with a punk-infused soundtrack that matures, complemented by pop aesthetics, along with Rococo art references the arts that are often dismissed or considered frivolous. A notable theme that transforms the reality into a story. Dunst stated, it's kind of like a history of feelings rather than a history of facts. The director told the New York Times in 2006, I wanted to make a personal story and not a big epic historical biopic after the film had just wrapped, when I would get bored when it would get sort of too detailed. I didn't want to get bogged down with the history, but to focus on the personal relations between these people. Louis wouldn't sleep with her, so she wanted to go out and party, like someone in a bad marriage going shopping. It just seemed like the same old story. With this, it's evident that the film is a differing one than the true story, so the execution of the costumes of the production in this film has its roots very much established with the 18th century opulence. But the diverging story and personality are not meant to align with historical accounts. Instead, it is very hyper-focused on a young girl becoming a woman who doesn't understand how to run a country, let alone know her place in the world. Instead, she turns to partying and indulges in her position, including the most excessive fashion. The Easter eggs of this film give great emphasis to this. For example, when she is exploring fashion further, among the shoes cast upon the floor, there is a pair of Converse sneakers, a symbol of her youth stylization are more daring in tutorial decisions, fashion but are well suited to the rebellious attitude and journey of self that this character is embarking on. At times, the costume designer will directly focus on the inner world of emotions and abstract reality to create a beauty that allows for a more whimsical and resonating on-screen experience. An example of very heightened artistry over accuracy pushed to the limits is the iconic atonement dress to allow for more emphasis on the body, emotions, and moment, but consists variables of this time in a very subtle manner. 
The dress is made of an incredibly fine silk, with detailing that is made with a cutout pattern or embroidery to provoke the thought of removing. The elements pay homage to London in the mid-30s, specifically how the cut accentuates the character's back and shoulders, a distinct trait of the time's formal wear that works into this moment. The only criteria costume designer Jacqueline Dern had to adhere to was meeting the length, lightness, and hue. The color is meant to symbolize the emotional state and the envy clouding situation. Green does not only represent this, but also psychologically. It embodies life, the act of expressing love, and abundance. It also provides a soothing effect on the mind and body. Executed in elegant, fluid manner, another film costume by her, Little Women has a very similar approach on a grand scale. Many of the characters are noted to sport quote-unquote remixed clothing, as this is noted to be part of Durin's process to design sentimental ensembles that are well suited to the narrative and characters, stating keeping it Victorian but not doing it the way we're used to seeing it. This differing approach makes this world and little woman stand out from the others. It also allows for sentiment to shine through every scene. For instance, the color palettes of the girls were aligned with each of the notebooks they received, a design element that is always present. Jo is the perfect example. She always has her heart on her sleeve. Her clothing right away communicates her identity, often in women's wear that was beginning to carry the tones of men's wear. Her sensitivity, recklessness, and intellectual musings that causes her to differ from the others is instantly communicated. A specific example of this is how she is never one adorned with a corset, hence the freedom of movement and, by extension, the mind. The obvious tutorial divide between her and her sisters allows for there to be an emphasis not just on identity, but also on development and hand of narration. An example of this is how Jo would wear Beth's clothing after her passing, or how she would often share with Laurie. Duran explained, what we were trying to achieve was to emphasize a back and forth fluidity in a way that they were just best friends and they identified with each other and they wanted to be the other person and they shared clothes. Each was styled very formably. The ensembles would represent the lives and bonds of the characters with a vulnerability that isn't so overt, but always present and felt deeply. To be critical of a film purely based on personal opinion of what is beautiful, odd, or unappealing, or deemed right artistically, is to isolate the variable of costume design from the necessary context and disregard the full worksmanship of the film and all that went into producing the overall imagery that is meant to capture the story, emotions, and experience of the piece. Costume design is not the same as a fashion collection. A collection of fashion contributes directly to the world. Costume design contributes to the world on screen. The art of stylized costume has allowed for a wide range of differing visuals to be present in our media, each remarkable and notable for their unique offerings that breathe a fashionable life into stories of or set in the past. For for many to enjoy in modern times. There is so much beauty and different perspectives and interpretations. Costume designers have defined and revived many period looks to capture the aura and bring to life the character on screen in a vivid manner, allowing for the narrative to not only make an impact on the eyes, but allow for the story to be in our hearts through the experiences and connections they materialize into embraced, beloved designs of very imaginative and inspired films. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications, and comment. Thank you so much for watching.